This is the best of the Rocker Morning Show with Meatball and Mark. Jonathan, you're on with Mark and Meatball. Mark and Meatball, good morning. Good morning, good morning sir. sir. How are you? Never better. What's up? Fantastic. Really appreciate you hanging out with us on the Rocker Morning Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a this is a big honor for me. And actually, I, this I've been a, a Star Trek fan for a long time. My my mother introduced it to me. And I promised myself and my mother, if I ever got to talk to you, I would ask this question because I've always been curious. Okay. Shoot. The leg move that William Riker does over the chair. Is that something oh, is that is that <laughs> is that something that was written into the script or was that something you added to that character? It wasn't written into the script and I gotta say it's kind of an asshole move, isn't it? To step over- <laughs> Somebody compiled a uh, a little YouTube collection of all the times I allegedly right. did it, which made it only seem more absurd. Right. I won't say I'm proud of it, but I'm glad that it's become a popular. <laughs> well, I was I was wondering if it was on purpose. You and and that character and Captain Picard, almost like yin and yang, polar opposite kind of characters. Because like, oh, yeah. you know, Picard was very rigid and stiff in his chair, and then you know, number one, never sat straight in his chair ever. And I wonder if that was. I always wondered if that was on purpose. I think there was a lot of yin and yang. I think that was a physical choice. But the, the, the just stepping over the chair. You got to measure that up first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Now, as a as a fellow brass player too, uh, you know, I was excited as a kid to see you break out the trombone on the show too. And I know, like, all the characters kind of had their own hobbies that they got to feature on the show. Was that something you were already doing, or is that something written in for the character of Riker as well? Well, Morris Hurley, late great writer of, uh-huh. uh, I think it was during season one took me to lunch and we had a long lunch and he asked me about what I talked about baseball. I talked about jazz. I talked about the trombone and then fast forward about a month. Riker's in the holodeck with Minuet playing the trombone. So it's something I, I was given the trombone in fourth grade uh-huh. in Jefferson elementary school in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, because I had long arms and that's how they determined what <laughs> instrument went to whom. So the, the old used trombone from the Jefferson elementary school I started on and then I stayed with it all through, uh, I still play. So very it was cool. a very smart choice to ask people to do things that they actually do in real life because musicians really hate it when <laughs> they see people who can't play pretending right. to play. Right. And you're still in the Star Trek universe. You recently directed a couple episodes of Star Trek Picard, which is returning for a third season. How exciting was it to step back into that creative role in the Trek universe? Well, Picard has been a real blessing. I did two more episodes this year as a director, but. I think more significantly for the fans, the cast from Next Generation is a huge part of the Star Trek Picard season three Mm -hmm. story. So there's a lot to look forward to. It drops on February 16th on Mm -hmm. Paramount Plus, just to plug Star Trek Picard. (laughs) And I also, I just finished the first half of the finale of Star Trek Discovery season five. Oh, great. I did a wonderful crossover episode on Star Trek Strange New Worlds, where the uh, animated characters from Lower Decks yeah. join the company of Strange New World. So I'm quite grateful to be <laughs> part of the next next generation of sure. uh, Star Trek. It's very cool how widespread the Star Trek universe has now become, especially with you know platforms like Paramount+. Plus. Before you got in to like Next Generation, were you much of a, a Trekkie with the original series? I wasn't. When I was auditioning for the show, my wonderful wife, Jeannie, said this is a big deal. She used to have a, a poster of uh, Shatner or Kirk on her wall as a <laughs> right, child. So right. she was... <laughs> He was a much bigger trekker than I, and uh, believe me, I learned what a phenomenal family is to be a member of. We're coming up on the 25th anniversary, too, of Beyond Belief, which is a show that I scraped the surface of when I was younger, but it wasn't until recently that I was able to go back and experience these episodes. Uh, You joined Beyond Belief in season two, which is, uh, for me anyway, when the show really began, Uh, (laughs) even though season one was great. It really felt like this was the perfect role for you. Is this something you sought out? I was asked to do it, I think, in my uh, capacity as the official spokesperson for the paranormal. Okay, (laughs) all right. Perfect. (laughs) And a couple of these type, I did a show called Alien Autopsy, Factor Fiction, and Paranormal Borderline and all. So it was a genre that I was invited into because of Star Trek, I'm sure, Sure. and my healthy relationship with all things alien, and because they couldn't afford Patrick Stewart. So it was a... (laughs) I'm going to have to look into these because I've never seen these before. <laughs> Even more fun than trying to guess if the stories were actually based on true events or if they were fake. 
your puns at the end of the episode. Well, those were genius. Oh those my were, god, dude, very, they are my favorite very, part. <laughs> mine too, mine too, and it's everybody's favorite part. And those puns became memes, and I think the memes recreated an interest in the show twenty five years later. Oh my god, Barry Edelman wrote them. We call them the Edelmans at the end of the show. Yeah, I actually just did an eight episode season for Germany of a spin. I guess it's a spin off. It's called X Factor. Okay. Huh. The impossible. It's beyond belief. Exactly the same format. A lot of smoke in the room. Me and a black dude walking <laughs> around with an absurd prop. Thing. <laughs> Have you ever been to a Chinese restaurant? Or you know, it's just the smirk gets me every time. Did you write those yourself? <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. They're oh called the God. Edelman. Very Edelman. All that stuff. Oh, that's that so great. great. <laughs> <laughs> you sold it perfectly. I'm I'm with Mark though. It's not so much even just the delivery of them, which was masterful. It's the smirk. It's that it's that William Riker almost kind of smirk at the end. I think that just landed them every time. One of the secrets to the success, at least I think, of that show was that um, Al Schwartz was the director. Barry wrote them. Barry Ilman wrote them. But Schwartz and Barry decided never to tell me which was fact and which was fiction, so oh. that my delivery wouldn't either in my body language or in my tone or anything. So I had the same sort of tongue-in-cheek uh, smirk, I guess, <laughs> right. approach to every story so that the families who are sitting there trying to vote on which were real and which weren't <laughs> Smart thing. wouldn't be persuaded by my uh, whatever intentional or unintentional leanings <laughs> would Yes. Right, right. Man, that's smart. Well, aside from, you know, Beyond Belief and other roles that you've been playing, you've been playing a huge role, rather, in, you know, raising funds for pancreatic cancer. And yes. honestly, we'd love to hear more about this, uh, you being a spokesperson for PanCan, right? Well, here's how it started. My okay. wonderful brother, Daniel, who was a dear friend who I actually lived with in New York and L.A., and we took him to the hospital. This is 25 years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. joined us, and they opened him up looked, closed him up, and the doctor said, I'm sorry, he's got six months to live. Wow. So that kind of deal. So five months later, Daniel's dead, ironically the same week that my wonderful daughter was born. And at that point, there was a 4% survival rate for pancreatic cancer victims, and it's appalling, the number, and, and it's the worst of yeah. the cancers. Yeah, yeah. Fast forward, a dear friend of ours from the Star Trek world, Kitty Swink and Armin Zimmerman, who's part of the Star Trek Against Pancreatic Cancer team. That yeah. We raise money and we have the Purple Stride team. And Kitty is an 18-year pancreatic cancer survivor. That's wow. great. Which that is, is unheard of. Yeah. So the hope that she provides is what I used to share with my mom, which helped to give her hope. So we're raising money for research, for early detection, for better treatment options. And one of the other things I'd like to plug when we're doing this is that when you go for your annual checkup, tell the doctor if you've got anybody in your family who's mm -hmm. had pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So pancan.org, it's a very user-friendly website. Help us out. We'll raise some money. We'll save some more lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll check we'll, it out. Yeah, we'll include that information, too, when we post this up on our social medias and our website, too, as well. You can catch that at WRKR.com. Good news and bad news is that the uh, survival rate now is 11%, which still sucks. Yeah, yeah still yeah. got to get but that But still, I, you know, improvement there, and that's that's phenomenal in that regard. We'll definitely include that, absolutely, because we want to get those numbers up for sure. Before we let you go, since it's one of my favorite parts of any show ever, uh, do you mind if I end this interview the way you did Beyond Belief with a pun and get your reaction? Please do. Awesome. All right, here we go. In the story of the interview with me, Bala Mark, will it rank as Jonathan Frake's number one? Or will his memory of it turn the dial beyond belief? <laughs> what say you, Jonathan Frakes? <laughs> Fact or fiction? <laughs> That's what we're asking you, is it? <laughs> oh, man. Celebrating 25 years of beyond belief. Uh, helping raising funds for pancreatic cancer patients. Pancan.org. New season of Picard coming out for uh, Paramount Plus in February. Jonathan Frakes, we really appreciate your time today on the Rocker Morning Show. The pleasure's mine, Mark and Meatball. Live weekday mornings from 6 to 10 and on demand in the Rocker app. It's the best of the Rocker Morning Show on 1077 RKR.